Hi, if you're watching this video, you must be at least a little curious about what's inside a PC. Or maybe you finally decided it's time to build your own. Well, good for you. It's fun. And if we can do it, anyone can. Thanks for purchasing Tech TV's How to Build Your Own PC, part of our series with Q Publishing, the leader in computer education. I'm Leo Laporte. And I'm Patrick Norton. Now, we're the host of Tech TV's The Screen Savers. Now, every night we tell, well, we help people just like you to solve their computer problems. As we like to put it, Patrick, we're saving the world one computer at a time. But right now, we're going to show you how to build one of these things. Now, over the next hour or so, we're going to show you step by step how to find the right parts to build a PC and then how to put them together. We're also going to show you our expert building tips and tricks and we're going to try to demystify the whole process to make building a PC easy enough for anybody, even us, to understand <laughs> that's what we do best. And as if that weren't enough, as we go along, you can find more information and extra tips and tricks at our website, techtv.com slash build a PC. You ready, Patrick? I was born ready. <laughs> All right. Let's start a little bit by talking about the advantages and, and more importantly, even disadvantages of building your own computer. Is there an advantage to building your own computer? There's an advantage, okay. but maybe I better start with the disadvantages to scare anybody off who hasn't really thought about this. You do, you do want to think about it first, because there are some things that your own home-built computer is not great at. For instance, there are issues about compatibility. When you buy a pre-built computer, the manufacturer has tested all the parts to make sure they all work together and they all work with the software. You're combining parts of your own choice. Some parts may never have ever been combined together before. So there could be compatibility issues between the parts themselves and the software you'll be running. Also cost. I think a lot of people think they're going to save money by building their own. It's not a guarantee. Yeah. Dell, Compaq, Micro, all these big giant companies, they buy parts in the millions. You buy one. Now, if you're careful, you can think you're saving money, but chances are when you do the math later on, you're doing this because you want to, not because you're going to save big cash. Another problem is you're not going to get tech support on this stuff. Uh, you might get on individual parts, <laughs> you might get on the software, but as soon as you say, well, the Framit soundboard doesn't work with the mega, uh, Megalodon uh, video card, who are you going to call? There's no one number to call. There's no one person who assembled the whole computer. Yeah. You, you're going to have to do your own tech support. But hey, that's what you got into this for, right? To learn how to do it yourself. Do it yourself, right? There's also, of course, the issue of things like skin knuckles. We and have the scars course, to prove it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, the advantages yeah. are many. I don't want to discourage you completely because, first of all, you're going to get mm -hmm. exactly the computer you want. You specify every single bit and piece of that thing. You're going to get a computer that matches your needs, your wants, your desires. And you know what? The best part? Bragging rights from your friends. <laughs> well, let's get building. Come on. First of all, let's talk about preparing your work area, getting the right tools together. And, uh, well, we'll start with the work area. I have to tell you, I have worked in all kinds of conditions building PCs, everything from the dining room table to my kids' bedroom floor. Dorm but rooms, dorm garages. Rooms. You've done it everywhere, too. And you said, but this is an ideal, perfect fantasy. Yeah, but it's so nice. Yeah. If you can get something like this, so it would be great. First of all, it's clean. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get any fuzz or dirt or lint in your PC. It's well lit. Really nice, yeah. because a lot of this stuff is tiny, and when you get old like me, not you, Patrick, but yeah. when you get old like me, it's hard to see a lot of little fine uh, lines and the and the lettering and stuff. So it's, it's dry. Look too. how clean it is, isn't it? Dry is important. Why? Because computers don't like wet. And this is one that you might not think of. If you can do this, it mm -hmm. really is great, especially in dry climates. No carpet. Static electricity. Watch. Stop. The worst thing for your computer is static electricity. It doesn't hurt too much when I touch Patrick's nose. Speak for yourself. But those thousands and thousands of volts mm -hmm. going into those tiny integrated circuits yeah. can literally break them, fry them. So no static electricity. Here's a little tip. If you don't, if you'd have to work on a carpet, a little trick. Oh, that. You put a little spritz about a cap full of uh, fabric softener in a spritz bottle of water mm -hmm. and you spritz the carpet. And the fabric softener actually kills the static electricity. Sledgehammers aside, you don't need that many tools to build a PC. It's really pretty simple. Yeah. We've actually got kind of more than you need here. It's all sort of, yeah, more than you need. It's all neatly arrayed. 
Container for small parts. We of course this is great. We can build computers all the time, so we've been saving small parts our entire adult lives. Uh, what else do we need? We uh, second thing's most important. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, ladies and gentlemen. One of the plus screwdrivers. Yeah. Patrick is an old-fashioned kind of guy. Likes to use the manuals. I personally, I'm lazy. I like to use uh, an automatic screwdriver. I think power. it does a power tool is always good, isn't it? And I thought, what's nice is it, it does the work for you. So you can screw it in. Now, Patrick's uh, one disagreement with these, and I think you're right, is you can over torque. You mm -hmm. can overdrive a screw. So rather than using your, uh, you know, your battery powered super duper screw uh, buster and, and portable drill, maybe one of these in an inexpensive uh, kind of a, a screwdriver. Right. This is not going to have so much torque that yeah. can actually hurt anything. Even if you're not using that, you don't you need can do it by to hand. No. Be gentle. Yeah. Yeah. So these are all the must have. Any other yeah. must haves? You know what? You're going to be trimming, you're going to be cutting, you might be playing around. A box cutter, a standard utility knife. Ladies and gentlemen, be careful with it. Kids, don't use this one without the permission kids. of your parents. Yeah. You 18 cut yourself. or older. Don't blame me. Absolutely. Now, we also want to talk about something. These are probably shouldn't be on the optional list, but some kind of needle nose pliers very or hemostats, handy. something you can very, reach very in. Handy. You're putting jumpers in, you're pulling cables in and out. I drop screws all the time yeah. into the case, and this is probably oftentimes the only way you can get in there and pull mm -hmm. the screw out. And you don't want to leave any loose metal yeah. inside your case. Not only does it exactly. sound bad when it rattles around, it can short out stuff. Uh, what are these? Things? These are zip strips. Now, you're going to have a lot of cables inside your computer. Now, you might do it just to make it look neat and tidy, or you might do it because the less cable sprawl you have, the easier airflow will be inside the system. You basically, you wrap this around the group of cables, you insert neatly so, and you... These are so handy. And they're inexpensive. I have some, I just keep them yeah. around all the time. They, even outside your computer, all that yeah. massive cables you have behind your desk, these can be very handy for organizing them and keeping them in shape. Yes, so is. there are the tools, both the necessary and the nice to, and the nice to have. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a sledgehammer, kids, to be honest. <laughs> The tools you'll, ha you'll need are a parts container, a Phillips screwdriver, a box cutter is handy, needle nose pliers, and zip strips to tie everything down and keep it nice and neat. Now, this is the fun part, let's go shopping. Ooh, it's good fun, I love doing this. Before you run out with your cash and your credit cards and your hot little hands burning a hole in your pocket, whatever it is, mixing metaphors, you need to do <laughs> your homework. Well, that's absolutely right, because you don't want to buy more than you need or less than you need. So take some time to yeah. spec out your new PC. What does that mean, to spec it Basically, out? Basically, decide on, the, on the, the list of specifications defining the contents of your PC. It's, How do we it's know? It's the parts list. How do we get a parts list? Okay, you can go to the screen savers. We have a list of like our favorite sub-1000 PCs, even cheaper. You can you know, look at all those those expert sites like Anantech and Tom's Hardware, all that good Magazines stuff. Magazines will tell you. Magazines will tell you. Talk to your friends, see what they're using. Basically, come up with a list of parts. The motherboard, the processor, the graphics card, the audio card, the case, the memory, all this good stuff. You want to check your list. Even if you don't maybe use our list of parts, check your list against our list. Make sure you have one of each because if you don't have all the parts you need, nothing worse than building a PC, getting home and going to go online and realize you don't have a modem. Right. Or, or buying more parts than you need or buying right. a part that doesn't work with another part, things like that. Very right. important. You can get everything you need, at least the beginning of the research, online here. Yeah. The PC breaks down into a few simple components. You're going to start with your CPU. That's the processor, the brains mm -hmm. of the computer. You also need memory chips. That's where the data that you're working on and the programs you're running are stored while the CPU is working on them. What else are we going to put in there? Well, you're going to need a video card. That takes the pictures. It basically turns the zeros and ones the PC needs into the pretty pictures you look at on the screen. Not, that video is not the only card. You're going to need a sound card mm -hmm. as well if you want to hear stuff. And you're probably going to want to get some fans for the processor to keep them cool. That's a big one. You're going to want speakers for the sound card, a power supply and a case. They usually come together, but that's to stick everything in. Right. And then finally, the most important, actually it's not finally, but the most important part, which is the motherboard. Why, what is the motherboard? Okay, the motherboard, it's kind of like, you know how you have a frame for a car and you bolt all the parts onto the frame? The chassis, yeah. The chassis. Well, you know what? It, your, your case is kind of the chassis, but the real heart of your computer is the motherboard. It's where your processor, your memory, all of your cards, all of your hard drives, everything connects to the motherboard. It's the heart of your machine. The biggest circuit board in your computer. Sometimes mm -hmm. they call it the main board. You'll also need storage, right. the hard drive, the floppy drives, the CD drives. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to get online, you'll need either a modem or a network interface card. You don't have to do all that research if you don't want to. Just go to our website, techtv.com slash buildapc. 
yeah. and we've got a list of the components we're going to use in my PC and Patrick's PC so you can do exactly what we recommend. But first, let's recap. Basic PC components you're going to need to buy include the central processing unit or CPU, your RAM, your memory chips, you're going to have to have a video card so you can see things, a sound card so you can hear things, you'll need speakers to go with the sound cards, fans to keep everything cool, you got to have a power supply and a case to hold all of this stuff. And of course the motherboard and storage, floppy, hard drives, optical drives like a CD-ROM. If you want to get online, you're also going to need a modem or a network interface card. You ready, Leo? I'm ready, let's it's go! Time to put it all together. We're going to start with the PC's core components. The CPU, the motherboard, wow. the memory, and of course the case and the power supply. You put them all in. It's like my birthday here. Look at all this stuff. I'm Amazing. so excited. This really is the fun part. We're going to start with the case. Mm -hmm. You've got to get the case together before you can put all these nice pieces into it. We're going to start by opening up the case so we can, you know, get inside. We, uh, we have the power supply here. Let me get that out of the way, and I'm going to turn the case around so you can see what we have to remove here. We've got to remove these screws that are holding the panels on so we can get inside the case. This is where, Patrick, I'm going to have a big advantage with my power <coughs> screwdriver. I love this thing. We just zip these off. Go ahead. You go ahead, Patrick, and do yours. Look and see here. You know, you, don't, you often don't need to remove all the screws. In fact, you probably don't want to remove all the screws. Just enough to get into the case. In this, in this particular case, there are three screws holding on each panel. All right, so you beat me. Don't show off. So, and once you get yep. the panel off, you'll be able to see inside. That is an empty case. There's nothing in it, not even a power supply. Here's where you've got your mayonnaise lid or your screw container. Right. That's going to come very handy. Don't lose these screws. Put them somewhere safe. Put the uh, case uh, uh, panel aside because you're not going to need to put that back until you're all done with the system. Now, when you're looking at this, when you buy your case, right, make sure this is the area where the power supply goes if it's not mounted in there. What I want you to do when you're looking at that, make sure the power supply doesn't cover up the area where you're going to put the motherboard in. You know why? It makes it hard to get the motherboard in and out. You got to pull the power supply in and out anytime you do anything. We want you to be able to put the power supply in, forget about it, then put the rest of the components in your system. So, you ready to put a power supply in? I'm doing in that video? right now. Many cases these days come with power supplies already attached and you oftentimes get your case that way. We wanted to show you how to put in a power supply because sometimes you want to upgrade the power supply. Inexpensive cases often come with pretty bad power supplies and since the power is what determines the, uh, uh, the reliability and the effectiveness of the machine, it's important to get a power supply that really has all the juice you need. You got to get that in just in the right spot. Am I doing it right there, Patrick? Are you doing it? Am I, I upside down? You You're upside oh, down. Oh, look at that, see? By the way, on the other side of the power supply, these are all the connectors that are going to connect up to the motherboard and the peripherals. You don't have to worry about those, but if you have them outside the case, you've done it wrong. <laughs> we know that much for sure. There, that fits nicely. And you'll see there are screw holes on the back of the power supply that match the holes on the back of the case. How are you doing, Patty? You almost done? Uh, Show yeah. off? I knew it. <laughs> oh, man. I'm almost there. Usually once you got the power supply inside the power supply, once you've got it, you make sure you make sure the fan's clear. You got that plug on the back. Let me actually flip this around. So when it's in, it should look nice and neat and orderly. All these holes should match up as you put them in. This is where your power supply, your power cord goes in. This is the fan. It helps ventilate. Generally, on your system, it'll either be a fan on the inside of the power supply or ventilate into the outside of the case that pulls air through the power supply, cools your system down. You see this spaghetti in my left hand? Don't ever pick up it. Don't do this. Patrick, ever. stop it's bad it. It's for your system. Stop it, Patrick. Don't do that. Now, You're this, a bad man. I'm not a bad You're man. You're torturing that case. Thing. There's a difference. <laughs> All right. Now, look at this spaghetti inside your case. Now, if you've done your job specking out your parts, there's something you're going to need. These little puppies, all right, these are the power supplies, these are the plugs, the Molex connectors, uh, let me put one up, the Molex connectors, these go into your hard drive, you need to, and your CD-ROM drives, all those stuff. You're going to need one of these things for each of the devices inside your computer. All right, I got my power supply in, what do I do next? It's time to put in the motherboard. Uh -huh. Now, actually, we should say something, you got a, you got a decision, there's a, there's a crossroad you come to here. We're you at got, a crux. A crux. All we right. have to make a decision, we hate making decisions, you might too, you got two options. You can either put the motherboard into the case and then put all the other stuff onto the motherboard, or if you're, if you're a little nervous about working inside of here, especially if you're working with an Athlon processor, they're a little sensitive. I've broken one or two putting them or together. three. You might want to, no or more than four. four. <laughs> now, this is your motherboard. What you may want to do is actually put the processor and the heat sink and the fan on the motherboard and then 
put the whole thing assembled inside the case. There's another thing you're going to want to do before you get the motherboard in there, and that's kind of prepare the case by putting the motherboard risers, risers. onto the case. Let me just show you. This case, like mm -hmm. most cases, has many different uh, screw holes in a lot of different places that you could put it. Let me make sure you can see that. So it's and that's because every motherboard has different positioning of the screws on here, so they give you a lot of compatibility, uh, a variety for compatibility. Very, very important that you put the risers in exactly where there are going to be holes for them on the motherboard. What you really don't want to do is put in a riser somewhere where it's not going to actually go through a hole in the motherboard, but